What is going on, Coin Traders? Thanks for joining me for the show, looking at Injective I-N-G on that ticker. And it has been a little bit of time since we have covered Injective on the channel, but nonetheless, still a very good crypto that start to cover a little bit more, and especially over here on Twitter, have had a lot more discussions about Injective I-N-J. If you're not currently following me over on Twitter, drop me a follow at coin underscore trades is the handle due to a lot of discussions on different cryptos as well as Injective. So looking forward to chatting with everyone over on Twitter and X. Now, obviously, it just goes without saying that Injective has been on an absolute tear here over the last couple of weeks if we actually look and we are on the daily chart if we look at the daily candles recently just look at the size of the bodies on these overall candles super small bodies super small bodies so not a lot of selling pressure at all right now we are getting a little bit more but that is to be expected especially with the amount of gains we've had so from this swing low at about 15 even up to the current prices looking at over 150 percent gain and up to the top looking at about over 180 percent so a lot of extreme gains, and we know that we need to spend some time now actually retracing. So whether or not we do see this as the current trend high right now, spend a little bit more time in consolidation or not, we're going to be talking about that a little bit more in the show, along with what potential targets we could be seeing out of Injective right now. So now since the middle of October, when a lot of the cryptos did find their local bottom, we had a very nice steady uptrend resulting in a very nice flag pattern before finally breaking out of this, relating to our extremely monumental explosive move here. And do just want to talk about this flag pattern a little bit more because we have a lot of great things going on about it. So you can see the downtrend resistance line and then also we can draw a very nice downtrend support line. As you can see, did kick off the exponential moving averages first between the 12 and 26. Then we finally found local lower support between the 26 and the 50 before finally finding a nice breakout of this flag pattern. One of the things about it, let's actually go ahead and zoom in here, is that we had a very nice back test of this pattern once we actually broke out. So we had our very nice breakout, which did push prices up to 1753, almost 1754, followed by three bearish days of pullback. Just look how small the bodies on these candles actually are. And notice a lot of the lower downside shadows just showing all this buying. So the fact that three bearish candles only fit into this much of this bullish candle that was on the breakout, very good sign. The second thing we were looking at is a back test and confirmation. So as you can see, we had our nice breakout. A couple days later, had our pullback to test this trend line that we were kicking off of so much. Finally confirmed it as support and then saw the next higher high get set. Once again, after that, immediately following several bearish days that couldn't even take out one bullish candle. And then obviously after one more pullback and test in between the 26 and 50 period EMA, you know what happens from there. The rest is history. So the thing right now about this chart is that we're just so far overextended. So for example, even on top of the price, so from current prices about 39.18 at the time of recording down to the 20, the, sorry, the first 12 period EMA, we are looking at that being a pullback of about a little bit less than 20%. If we actually flip over to the weekly here, it's pretty crazy because from current prices down to the weekly 12 period EMA, we are going to be looking at about 47% of a retracement. So yeah, we do have potential and a little bit of room to actually pull back. Now, if we look at the close on this daily candles, we would be looking essentially to about 30%. Now, I'm sorry, the $30, effectively 30.614. And if we actually look at a Fibonacci of where that would end up retracing to from the local swing low up to the current trend high right now, that would have us pulling back and actually sitting around the zone of 38.2, which is one of the very nice targets that we look for in healthy retracements pretty much any more of this will co continue to solidify this as being a local trend top because going any farther past this does make it extremely hard and difficult in the short term to actually rally up and blow through that as a target especially when we have been setting higher daily lows on the last consecutive candles so we have our 38.2 percent target we also have our price level for the closing resistance at 30.614 and then as you can see a very nice zone will be set just based on the size of these upside wicks so on the body small bodies but extremely big upside wicks showing a lot of tests from the bulls to break over this level ultimately the bears smash that though so we know that that does help to contribute to building a very strong supportive zone when we do see our back test so when that actually does happen, we're going to have a nice zone here because we're also going to have these exponential moving averages rolling up. So that's what we're actually going to be looking at. We're going to have a lot of extremely nice support targets to the downside 
to ultimately pull back. So I would expect if we do get a little bit of retracement, which is seeming a little bit more likely just based on how overextended we are on the charts. But yeah, so if we do get that pullback, we would expect to see that pullback pretty much coming in all the way down to a lowest of 30.6. Now, if we do see that effectively fail, then we would be looking pretty far down because essentially if we look at these candles, a lot of upside without stopping to actually produce a lot of consolidation, which does help to strengthen that level as a very nice support on the downside. So for example, the amount of time that we spent in this overall region effectively from about the 15 mid 15 levels all the way up to about 18 and a half as well. Another strong zone in the event. Ultimately, we do see a retracement that far. Definitely not a prediction. So don't roast me for it in the comments below, please. Now, I do want to look at some technical indicators, specifically look at volume first. So what's interesting about this injective chart is that we actually had our peak volume come in, not even anywhere close to where we had our current trend high right now. And ever since we have seen just a slippage in overall peak volumes coming in. So even on the big bullish days that we have had recently, we actually still have seen a decrease in taper down in the overall bullish volume that we're seeing right now. So the big 20% day that we did have had volume coming in at 209.94. And that is 1000, by the way. And then our current trend high volume right now, which was another big over 10% candle, saw us at 177.844,000. So we know that a lot of the buying pressure is starting to get exhausted here. And if we look at some of the more technical indicators as well, point up the RSI on this daily, we did peak out at a close of 88.81, extremely overbought. And what's actually significant about that too, is that's actually less than what we were seeing back here before we were consolidating back when we were around the 12 to $13 zone. So that does mean that right now we are starting to see bearish divergence coming in, setting a lower high on these RSIs yet meanwhile, a much higher high in the overall price. So that is one more tick box in this being a trend high and also needing to see a little bit more consolidation and a little bit of breathing room for the bulls to take a break because so much buying pressure is never sustainable for the longer term anyway without healthy and significant retracements. Now looking down here on the bottom as well, Stochastic RSI has been hovering substantially above the 80 line here on the daily. So we do have to actually see this oscillator at some point rotate down, just kind of like we saw when we did get overbought, a little period of slowdown and consolidation. Meanwhile, this oscillator retraced. So definitely a possible scenario and setup as well. Not necessarily as likely just to go as sideways in this event, like we saw basically back from October through the December kickoff here when we saw the massive explosion over the last couple of weeks. But like we said, definitely not to say that we couldn't see a potential small retracement. So even down to that target that we're looking at about 22% retracement, which is actually nothing given the amount of gains that we have seen for injective, just another opportunity to see a little bit of lower buying prices if that is what you are searching for for a target. So now I do want to flip over here and talk more in detail about the weekly chart here. And if you haven't watched the channel before, you know how I feel about charts like this that just get extremely vertical. It's not necessarily my favorite for entry due to the risk of an inevitable pull off and sellback being that much greater, the higher and the more vertical this does go because we've never seen charts like this in any financial market that just are able to sustain this type of move and then ultimately end up trading flat and going higher without any sort of significant retracement. So vertical charts are always a little bit more on the scarier and higher risky side, but that still doesn't mean that we couldn't see another spike to the upside and another weekly big growth. So as long as we do see, and it's kind of tough to see down here, but we do have decent amount of candle volume coming in. So being about less than halfway through this weekly candle, we are still on path to actually beat the previous candle that we have set so far. So last week's candle topped at a volume of 1.234 million. Currently, we're looking at about 622.54 thousand. So definitely on track with about four days, a little less than four days left on this candle. But keep in mind that that could ultimately end up being our peak volume as well, which would signal again another local top coming in. One of the possible scenarios too is doing kind of what we saw back from October to the recent breakout where we just had a period of about a month here just sitting sideways and you can see all the long lower shadows on these candles. So we could actually end up still seeing something very similar for a prolonged future, allowing these exponential moving averages to pretty much catch up to where we're at. And then from there could see the next leg to the upside if we do get that big explosive volume to continue. 
One of the reasons that these charts always do end up retracing is that volume can't continue. And then with such explosive gains, that does trigger a lot of selling pressure because there is then a lot of profit ticking, which does drive down the price. And because we have a lot of buying that does happen up at the top, which is why the volume is typically so big, then that also typically shoots down the price a lot more because there's a lot of panic selling due to the high amount of buying up at these levels. So again, not to say we can't go a little bit higher, but that does increase the likelihood of that risk of just a lot of downside pullback slipping action. If we go ahead and zoom out here to a few things to talk about, and one of the things is that we're actually looking at a very nice accumulation or Wyckoff accumulation for a bottom here. So we have our spring sign of strength and then our explosive phase E breakout. Typically, this is what we see in a lot of cryptos, and a lot of cryptos are actually at this first entry stage right now where we would be looking to actually consolidate for a period of time since we are overextended on a lot of these charts, and then finally having our big breakout likely being in the bull market. So injective is just way ahead of its time right now, but ultimately this is the type of pattern like we do expect for a lot of crypto, and that's why it is so exciting. Having this is kind of a foreshadow of a lot of the other strong altcoin names. All right, so switching over into the four hour really quick before we wrap up because we need to look at the shorter term trends. So with all this talk so far about a local top coming in for the trend, we actually need to look at the shorter term trends because we can't confirm a local top and a trend high coming in without changing this trend on the shorter term chart first. So what this means is that right now we're looking at these exponential moving averages being a very nice supportive guide and band to the upside. And essentially, especially because we have highs, higher lows, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, and now higher high, meanwhile trying to set a higher low. So if we actually can continue to set a higher low on top of about 35.73 to about 36.36, that's going to be our big point where we could actually see the next leg continue. So as long as we do maintain this uptrend and hold EMA support on this four hour chart, then likelihood of a continued uptrend is still very high. But once we actually lose that on the four hour chart, then we will start to look for a trend high coming in and then setting a daily higher low on the longer term charts. If we go ahead and take this four hour and pull up RSI as well. You can also see again, bearish divergence on this chart. So we actually have a high, lower high, lower high, and now lower high. Yet meanwhile, we have high, higher high in highs, higher high in price, and then higher high in price as well. So four big peaks here and four price levels. So that's four data points for this bearish divergence on this four hour chart. Definitely signaling a little bit of that downside risk incoming here in the near to short term future. Obviously, though, none of this is financial advice, and I do expect to see much more higher highs out of injective over the course of this next cycle. But uh, yeah, for all things that we talked about on this chart, I'm personally going to avoid making any short term entries myself just because we are going to expect at some point a little bit of a retracement and a downside test of some lower supports in order to establish a daily higher low. With that, though, that actually is going to go ahead and wrap up the show and our update for Injective I and J on that ticker. If you did enjoy the video, please hit the thumbs up, like, and subscribe if you have not done so just yet. And also, don't forget to go follow me over on Twitter or X at coin underscore trades is the handle over there. Looking forward to chatting. That is going to do it for now, though, so stay safe, take care, and I will catch you back in the next video.